smallest mini bus with Mary and Captain and you. Get on the bus! I camped last night here in Lake George, New York. I have to say this is one of my favorite places that I've stayed. And it's definitely one of Captain's favorite places. The drive here was pretty and uneventful and I, I'm really ready for uneventful these days. First thing I did when I got off the ferry was I went to this farm store. I needed eggs. It says no dogs, so my friend's gonna have to wait here. So this little store is self-serve. You see that a lot with these kind of little farm stores. And they've got some, you know, interesting vegetables. They've got some zucchini over here, green beans over there, fennel. But they don't have any tomatoes, and I really needed tomatoes. Oh, but wow, look, at they have these books. I think these are written by the owner of the farm. And I would buy one if I could read anymore. But with the double vision, I stick to audiobooks these days. So to check out, you write down what you bought and you pay for it here, but. But the bummer is they don't have any eggs. Well, I know Uncle B is gonna have some eggs for me when I get to South Dakota, so I guess I can hold out until I get there. And then Lake George. It's a touristy place and this is tourist season. I usually get really into the history of the places that I go, like as you guys know, and Lake George has a lot of history, but I don't know. Every time I start reading about it, French and Indian War, you know, that kind of stuff, my eyes just glaze over. Maybe it's because I'm traveling right now, so my mind is on a lot of other things. Or maybe it's maybe it's just that I have a more personal history with Lake George, and that's what I think of when I think of this place. My family came to Lake George on vacation when I was a kid. Not to this place, because mom and dad... We're not big on camping. We went instead to a place called Flat Rock. Whoa, fly on my nose. We went instead to a place called Flat Rock Cottages, which is like a little family motel with a pool. It's called the Flat Rock Resort or something like that now. There were amusement parks we went to, Storytown, Gaslight Village, they don't exist anymore. Now there's Six Flags. A lot of things are still here though. The Minnehaha, which is a steamboat. That was my mother's favorite. We also used to go to all these arcades along here, along the boardwalk or whatever they call this. My mom was a whiz at skee-ball and that's where she spent her time while we were on the pinball machines or I, I, I'm assuming it was pinball machines because I don't even think that things like Pac-Man were invented yet when we first started coming here. When we were teenagers, we would bring family friends along with us when we went on vacation. And I remember one time we came here and my friend Roxanne came with us. My brother had rented a car from some company called Rent-A-Wreck and it was a wreck. But Roxanne and I borrowed it and we drove to, I want to say Schenectady maybe. And we got this, I got this tattoo. See, you can't really tell even what it is anymore, but it's like, it's a butterfly. My mother was furious. Now I camp when I come to Lake George. This is my second time in this campground. I found it on free campsites. I'll put a link in the description. If you come looking for it, the GPS takes you to the little parking lot that's between the two different camping loops. On free campsites, somebody said that one of the loops was very hard for a big rig to get into. So I checked that one out first and it is a narrow dirt road. I got in just fine, but Number one, there's hardly any campsites on that row anyway. Number two, the ones that are there are really small, really soggy from the rain too that happened yesterday. And number three, there's a gate and the gate says that if it rains too much, they're gonna lock the gate. So the road is totally passable now, but what if it rains again? Or if somebody just decides it's too mushy and then locks the gate and then if you were camped over there, you'd be stuck. So came over to this side and here we go. We got it. This is our spot. This site was miraculously empty. I'm betting that somebody just left because I can't believe this would have been empty all week. It just doesn't seem possible. This campsite is big enough, seriously, for a Boy Scout troop. I'm parked at the top. There's like a little parking lot almost at the top. And then you go down into the woods and there's a big flat area the actual campsite where you're supposed to pitch your tent. It's right down at the creek. Well, it's actually, it's above the creek. 
it's beautiful. I almost feel guilty for taking up this much space, but it doesn't say it's a group site or anything like that. It's just campsite 12. That's all it says. A ranger or somebody, somebody in an official looking vehicle anyway, has driven by a couple times and no one's told me to leave. So I guess I'm good. I'm leaving today anyway. I think this place is actually mainly meant for tent camping. So yeah, you would do just what I'm doing. Park your vehicle up at the top and then walk down and set up your tent in the woods. I wonder if I could climb down there to the creek. I mean, I probably could, but with the knee the way it is, I probably shouldn't. It's not getting down there that worries me. It's getting back up here. So I think I'm gonna pass on that. There's a pit toilet. No, thank you. I got my own. There are a lot of mushrooms growing in these woods. That's because it's so damp and humid and that dampness brings the mushrooms. I looked this one up. It seems like it's edible, but I'm not sure I really trust that because, you know, you read, oh, yeah, you can eat it. And then the next thing you read, it says, oh, but don't confuse it with this other one that looks just like it. And, you know, pretty soon you're eating a poisonous mushroom. I would have to learn a lot more about mushroom identification before I would feel comfortable cooking that up and having it for dinner. This campground is totally free, but it's first come first serve and there's not a lot of spots. As you can tell from that super crowded drive through Lake George Village, the area is really popular in prime vacation season. It's, it's a lot more open in like April and May. I was here in May last time and it was wide open, it was great. It's probably good late in the season too, but I haven't been here then, so I can't really say for sure. I'm just staying the night this time, and then I'm continuing on. And if you're curious where Captain and I are going next, you can either sit around and wait for the next video, or you can join the Facebook group and then jump on the travel chat to follow along in real time. I'll get another video out as soon as I can. As soon as I can. But in the meantime, you got this one you could watch if you haven't watched it already, or you could watch it again if you have watched it already. And I will see you guys. I'll see you guys very soon.